had to have a license to be on the radio in the 70s, right? Yeah. I mean, a third class. Yeah, yeah you had to like take that. a test. Yeah, you had to take a test. Well, I started radio in 84, and by then everything was, de well, it got deregulated a few years after that. I, I had to send off for one, but I never had to take a test. Oh, I, had, I, I, was third, I was 12 and a half when my father drove me to San Francisco and I took the FCC exam. 555 five, five, Battery, Battery Street. Street. Exactly. <laughs> Under questions, and I got a 99%. All right. And were the, how much of those were technical questions? Extremely. Uh, the frequency deviation allowed on FM, do you know what it is? I have no idea. Oh, oh, wait, with between uh, channels, uh, isn't it 1.5 megahertz? Plus, plus or minus 20,000 cycles. Okay. Yeah. AM is plus or minus 200 cycles. Okay. Uh, you know, how do you take a base, an current, a base antenna current reading? See, I know the formula for that. <laughs> I know nothing else. Right. Uh, so in, you in had math. to actually do meter readings? Oh, yeah, yeah. We when had I did meter readings, it. I had to just um, press a button and write down what it told me. Oh, but there. you had to do actual math. Yeah, and there was a station that I worked for. It was a 10,000 watt, 50,000 watt directional station. It had four antennas. At, at the radio station, and there were catwalks that were this wide that went from the control room out, you know, 70 yards to each one of these sticks. And somehow, every hour, we had to take readings. So I would walk those catwalks with a flashlight, go to the base and turn it and get that reading, and take all four back and get the calculator out. I don't know how I did all this because you the records couldn't have were an intern do that. No, you had to be licensed. Okay. And then we had FCC inspectors every year that would come in and put you through the test, and you'd get your license changed if you didn't know how to do the math. Right. You know, so it, so yeah. how did that, do you think that that alone limited the pool, talent pool? Because well, it certainly made it harder. Not only did you have to uh, be a good entertainer, but you had to have some brains, too. And that was yeah. the toughest thing for me to do. I had no problem going on the radio and watching music and telling jokes. But, man, I had to be calculus. Oh, God. <laughs> Isn't it hilarious how when they deregulated radio, then all these idiots started appearing on the air? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe maybe it was a, a, a fil <laughs> filtration system that separated the men from the boys. I don't know. Uh, you know. But I think you're right. I think it gave me a little more respect and, and uh, concern over my facility. I think when you know that you are transmitting and you know that, that things change and you, you see the tubes bouncing and and you see the mechanics behind your way, your voice being turned into an RF frequency and being broadcast, it gives you a little more personal oh, attention. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're more of an engineer slash entertainer. Yeah. I can take a face. And today, a today's jock is neither. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, today's jock, it's just They're a button about. pushing liner card. They're reader. Pavlov's jock. Yeah. When the red light goes off, you talk. When the, green, or when the green light goes off, you talk. When the red light goes off, you stop. 